Previously on Schlender 5 Productions. Oh, I, plus, what if they brought it back and tarnished the legacy? Well, That's something, actually, we're going to talk about. Um, and the Crybaby fans come out on the internet making videos about it. Yeah, that's us in 20 minutes. It's you in 20 minutes. <laughs> us. Right now. Right now. <laughs> right now. Oh, damn it. Well, great, everyone. We are back to the Schlender 5 Productions. And as you know, in our last video, we were talking about the legacy movies to psych. There was three of them, with our focus primarily being on This Is Gus. Which brings up a broader question. Oh, man, you got to open your beer. I'm <laughs> <into> teleported. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, that's for you. Which brings up a, a broad question that... Uh, 13 think, days clean, out the window. <laughs> <laughs> that I think a lot of fans have, is how do you handle the legacy of a show that was popular and that people loved? Or is, do you need to? Do you even need to? I think that's a fair uh, question. Like, yeah. And how, what, what how, does, how about what does just like a like? franchise in general? Yeah, or a franchise in general, you know, because there, this is I mean, a broader yeah, topic than just TV shows. But a famous example of this would be Psych, like we just talked about, where they wrapped up a strong series and then they had the movies. Another example would be Firefly, where they weren't able to wrap up, but they did get a movie to that, finish it, right? You know what? I should have thought of that because I am such a big fan of Serenity. Exactly. And a fan of Firefly. Even if it turns out Joss Whedon's kind of like a douchebag. Kind of. Nah. Is exactly. But it doesn't matter and because then, you got to yeah. separate art from the artist But then you, then you do have another example, too, would be Hitler like uh, great paintings. the TV show yeah, Deadwood. Did. did not get to end exactly how they want to. I, for one, like the way it ended with Swergen scrubbing the floor, kind of talking to himself. Like I think that's a really neat note to end a series on. But they did get a movie after the fact that everyone was excited to do. So you have this situation where you have the actors and actresses, the creators, they're excited to come back to the property. And what we want to talk about is the right way to do it, the wrong way to do it, what are fans looking for, how much should we be pandering to the fans, if pandering is even the right word. I wouldn't say pandering is the right word because you're, you're counting on the popularity of the show to sell those movie tickets. Someone That's goes, I fair. like this show, I want to see this cast do anything again together. Mm -hmm. It's kind of re, you know, that nostalgia bubble. So it's just logical that you'd want to make those movies again. I, I actually want to say, I don't think the people who are doing reboots or continuations even care about the fans. They see them as numbers. They don't care about what fans like from it. We're seeing it so often now where they're just like, all right, this is the continuation of the franchise. This is how we follow it up. Deal with it. Like it. Don't like it. Who cares? We're the creators. You accept our content. I think you know, it's easy. You're going to see it anyway. Yeah, and I think with something like Psych, um, James Roday and Dooley Hill had a lot more creative control over those movies than they ever did on the show. And they got a lot of creative control on the show, but they were able to do whatever they wanted for the movies, clearly. Then, but oh, well, but then what did you have to say about the movies? Like, they weren't good. No, exactly. So, but that's what I'm saying. Because, but I think that's don't why... Don't actors control. Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, but I think that's how you entice people to get back into these things. Right, giving the producer credit. I, know. And, I mean, and this is not a new phenomenon. We recently talked about Star Trek The Motion Picture, which came out... I was about out, to say, exactly. Yeah, the, came out years and, after the series. And as, as divided as that film is, I loved Star Trek The Motion Picture. Oh, and I like it too, no, but I it has almost it. nothing to do with the original I loved series. It. But without it, you wouldn't go to Wrath of Khan, this is all, true. all the other movies, and then you wouldn't eventually get back to Next Generation. Mm -hmm. Now, another similar, Futurama. The show yeah. ended... They made a movie, which enabled them to make another movie, another movie, another movie, just like Star Trek. Only the other, every other one is good. Yep. And and then the series got to come back again, and is then it? again again. And what's what's great is the in these that situations we find when the series comes back, the series is usually pretty strong. And sometimes these movies are what's difficult. Which brings me to a, a, a phrase that I coined, and that is being coins are minted. That's true. So this it's, is the seat where you should be interrupting him and throwing that, him off a lot yeah, more. Yeah, right. No, I, mean, no, I, think I'm doing, I think I'm doing a pretty good job hosting. Um, <laughs> I think hosting. So what am I boasting? I like the I like the way shrub thinks. <laughs> no, stop it. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, uh, so I, I just want to give a little background behind where I'm going with this story. So it's kind of a winding road to get to where we want to go. Hello. Um, Derek and I realized in the mid-2000s that shows were advertised terribly. And there were tons of shows that they, we would see the advertisements for them and like, that looks stupid, that looks stupid, we're not watching it. 
But then we started giving these shows a chance, one being uh, Desperate Housewives, and it turned out to be hilarious. And then I said to Derek one day, I said, you know, we gave Desperate Housewives a chance even though it looked terrible. I think we should watch Prison Break, even though the advertisements for Prison Break were terrible because it's like, is this the time where Michael's plan gets thrown off? And then you see the preview next week. Now that Michael's plan's back on track, will they actually get out? <laughs> yeah. And then you see the preview for next week. Now that they're out, are they going to be on the... So it's just like, well, the previews are ruining the show. All but right. then we decided to give it a chance, and I, we I, loved the show. I do have a bit of an interjection yeah, on that. It. What you're building towards is... We ended up really liking Prison Break. Even season okay, three. Okay, so you like the show, I get it. Now what about the movie? Did, out it, did it's it tarnish not, the legacy? It's not actually a movie. This is where Final Breaking comes in. talk about it? No, 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 because the problem with fi the Final Break is... Is this it's fact this related weird, to Prison Break? It, it, exactly. No, it, was no, it, mark is. it is, but it was marketed as a movie. The show is over and they said Prison Break. The Final Break. And what the final break was, was basically an unused miniseries that they pledged together Two to explain the events that happened at the end of the series where we find out that Michael unfortunately has passed, his cancer had gotten the better of him, presumably. But we already knew he was dead, because they yeah. say so in the finale. Exactly, So that, but that's what happened. So at the finale, you basically, they've made it. And there's this mini story where his wife basically gets sent to prison and he has to break her Does out. Does it retcon something about the end of the series? Not not technically retcon. Well, a little bit. But what it does is it takes the agency from his it, death away. Yes. Because you assume he, he got to live a little bit happy with his family and then and die. And then die of his cancer. But then it turns out he died because he had, to, he had to electrocute himself so everyone else could escape. Yeah, it's like, it, it, it was so an ignominious bad. death for a very interesting heroic character. It, it was quite unfortunate. It is. It's it's terrible. And then that's when Derek and I realized, like, you know, if we never watched this, it would never, like, our enjoyment of Prison Break would be the same. Like, you can just cut this out. You never need would to watch it. Would it be the it. same or would it be better? Or would it, would it be better? It, it would be better. See, this is like an instance where maybe it tarnishes the legacy because it retcons something from the series. Exactly. And Whereas Psych, it didn't seem like it walked anything back. No, no, Psych doesn't. It's just not as no, enjoyable as but, the show. So, that so was the problem with Psych. If you, if you, if you end here, but they're right? Moving in the let's, right say, let's say you so. end at the top and you do, like, something weak. That's the last point. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that and that, your hyper obsession but, with endings. But now here's it's not the a thing. hyper obsession. It's a very natural thing See, to. I like the journey. See, but now here's yes, the thing. Yes, but though. the journey has to end well. Prison Break was know. able to come back Lord for another the season <laughs> after that. Oh, I haven't watched it. It was not great. It was it was okay. I mean, like it. This is one of those things. This is where you, being a fan, can make things tricky. It's like you like seeing these characters come back. You like seeing Dominic Purcell's Lincoln Burroughs. You know what I mean? Like, I like Dominic Purcell. I think he's a great actor. I wish he was in more things. He's great as Heat Wave. He's great in Heat Wave. He was great in the very short-lived series John Doe, which Gorkulon is going to be putting the graphic up <laughs> right here. You know, he like, flies in the graphics. Yeah, that'd be great. That's a lot of work for you. Oh, it is. Uh, well, you can. I'm do just going to pay somebody to build a fucking puppet at this point. <laughs> Dude, we should. No, oh, a little Muppet. Yeah, oh, a Muppet would yeah. be great. A Muppet would yeah. be great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to use it, but still have both my hands visible. <laughs> yeah, and, and so this is just something that a lot of shows have to deal with is where they end and then they're kind of build up a esteem that they can cash in on. Yeah. We saw it with um, Breaking Bad as well. They had the El Camino movie, but then even the spinoff, Better Call Saul. But Better Call Saul is amazing. You got the Entourage movie. I, I, you got I, the Entourage okay. movie. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned that because my... My first experience was the uh, final break, and to the point mm -hmm. where it ruined the franchise so much for us that we use it as a descriptor. Yes. And it's like, when I don't want to be final break. I don't want to be final break. Exactly. So, like, when the Entourage movie came out, we're like, I don't want to be final break. Patent pending. Yeah, exactly. Not for you. <laughs> no, like, yeah, I just patent pending. Or even, even <laughs> what was the first you thing I said when the Psych movies came out? I said, I don't want to be final break. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, 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 when we, uh, so when the Entourage movie came out, I'm so glad you brought that up because it, uh, Dylan sent me a text <laughs> message and he goes, you have 24 hours to watch Entourage movie before I ruin it for before you. Before I spoil the ending. Clock starts now. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I think I said like at 8 at night, too. And like, then it's like 7.30 the next morning. He goes, that was hilarious. You know? Now, you know, with the Entourage movie, I didn't see the show. I didn't care very much for the movie, but it seemed like when we had our guest, Marty Cotola, come on and talk about Love it. Love On our show, Reels of Justice, available wherever you get podcasts. Uh, he was very happy that it gave us a, a sub story to... Uh, Johnny Drama. Johnny Drama. Whoa. Which is what 
oh, we like Johnny as well. Drama was no sub story even in the show. He was he was a pretty well. Cool. That was Marty's case was that it was a Johnny Drama movie. Oh yeah. yes, it, it, and in which, the best possible way. No, like, Marty actually made a pretty so, good case. But did Johnny case, Drama get a nice ending in the got, series? They all got. Or did nice. the movie need it? Did he need that movie to get that extra cherry on top? Ooh, the movie is, is a cherry on top. Question. That's a good That's way of describing fair question. it. Question. Um, no, I think the series ends strong enough where you realize. Host, I don't. No, no, no. The, the movie yeah. ends strong enough. Switch. <laughs> oh, I get to oh, wear the gamer shirt. No, yeah. you can't wear my gamer shirt. Well, then you can't sit in the chair, bozo. <laughs> yeah, this is the hosting shirt. No, but that's actually a really good question, man. So the way Entourage ends is really strong. It's like, hey, of course they're all buddies. They're going to keep palling around and having fun little stories, right? Everyone loves that. But then I do think the movie gives Johnny Drama just that extra little bit, but it doesn't give that extra little bit to anyone else. I think and that I, was one of the weaknesses but, of but the also, movie. But also, I, it wasn't like oh, something... that one guy lost a bunch of weight and got to date Ronda Rousey. Well, it's yeah. Like a happy ending. Well, I guess. The happiest of endings of... If any, I, I just don't think Ronda Rousey would be an Oscar. Turtle. Ronda Rousey, he won a Golden Globe. Ooh, way then. <laughs> <laughs> Ronda Rousey, dating Ronda uh, Rousey, at least note, two Golden Globes. <laughs> please note that Maynard's opinion on the Golden Globes do not reflect those of the Slender Five Productions, which we just don't <laughs> think the Golden Globes are an award at all. <laughs> uh, talk about black and blue balls, uh, Ooh. but. I think another telling thing is, do you have to reassemble the team for your movie? Like, no. in Entourage, I can't remember exactly how, but it seemed like they'd kind of gone all their ways and then they were reunioning. Which, to me, sends up a message that they had some closure, they're opening things back up to do another story. At least when we watched Psych 3, maybe because it was a sequel from 2, uh, nothing had changed between Sean and Gus. Uh, that is one thing on. I do like. Hold too, on, I will say this. Compared to like motion picture, where the yeah. whole band was oh, broken yeah. up and they had to put them back. And together. that was really forced. It's you, like, hey, our Vulcan science officer died. What are we going to do? Hey, don't worry, Spock just showed up. He happens to be the best Vulcan science officer. It's like, oh, what a relief. <laughs> so to answer your question. Wait, wait, wait. Spock. <laughs> so, so to answer your question about um, did they have to like Avengers assemble Entourage they did not because the whole thing about Entourage even watching the show which I know you you, you haven't done it, um, and I won't. They they constantly well, the they yeah, constantly break up and come back. They constantly break up and come back. Yeah, every season break up and come back. Yes. Yeah. So for them to be broken up and then come back together to make money, not, is, not it's it's not, not very yeah. inorganic and it's, it's, apparently it's, a very convoluted, stupid series. Well, <laughs> it is it is convoluted. <laughs> I, this series is remarkably shallow. Yeah, oh <laughs> yeah, it's not. I, well, mean, I, I don't. I don't know if we should call him out, but I remember when we were watching it. Matt Costa showed up. He goes, "I love the show because it has chicks in every episode." <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Costa. <laughs> love you, Matt. And you know, he never had to worry about a plane flying backwards. <gasps> and now, uh, earlier you mentioned that's a good joke. That's and a really deep cut for him. He doesn't watch this, but if he ever did, he's gonna get. He would that. love that. But yeah. but earlier too, you mentioned right, the Sopranos, so and they just did a Sopranos movie, but it did the prequel trying to fill in some of the gaps before this series. Which I don't think it did a great job. Again, that's well, a big pussy was still a little pussy at the time. <laughs> <laughs> getting bigger. The, the Russian was not lost in the Pine Expanding. Barrens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, uh, expanding pussy. That's another episode we did with our good friend Andre Shane. He, put, he really picks that movie apart. Our film Driven, the podcast. I love that podcast. All right, so so we are talking about the legacy of... Um, now, but did something like that spoil a legacy when it's trying to fill in before? Again, is that more retcons? Well, I, I think that's a good question, and I think it's easier to ignore... Oh, I, was just I think it's easier to ignore something, I got something like The Saints about. of Newark. Right? Like I think you can watch it, you can kind of appreciate it, but at the end of the day, you kind of ignore appreciated it. appreciated that Italian bird. Here yeah. comes a rant from D-Rock in three, two, one, rant! The thing about expanding on things that are already finished is why we get bullshit shows like Picard. It's unnecessary, unwarranted, doesn't understand the character, doesn't understand the impetus, doesn't understand the mindset, doesn't doesn't give you anything. It's like somebody was like, what if we took Mass Effect, but oh Shepard were Picard? It's so oh stupid, God. it ruins the legacy. I was like, and it's like, and I tried my best. I really did. I tried my best to be like, hey, this is not that bad. But I guess gave what? Picard season it one is a that very bad. fair it shake. It is so bad. No, it is terrible. And Why this are is they one doing of the reasons. Why are they doing this to their fans? It
fucking hubris. And guess this what? Is you one know of the, the reasons thing, you know Nemesis that? is better than people think, right? Because of what Picard did, it makes Nemesis look better. This whole shut up and take it mentality from creators who don't understand, respect the fan base or like the... Well, the it, it's but so, here's your problem with Picard because from what I understand, it walked back a bunch of stuff. It retconned a bunch of stuff. No, it didn't Because that Picard so was a robot as, the whole time. No, he's a robot there. at the end. They, they turned him to a robot. They turned him to a oh, robot at the God, fucking end. I don't even right, want to so, talk so about like, it. Picard, oh, Picard so it's not like it's a retcon. I can't drink enough to talk it, about Picard. It just blatantly ignores all the things you like. It would be like, all right, well, uh, n name a TV show. Wait, you can I interrupt you real quick? Because I recently we read um, Baby Bears. Oh, now that's a great show. We should do an episode on that. I recently read the book by Michael Piller called Fade In: The Writing, The Creation of Star Trek Insurrection. And he won't shut and up. The, about well, well, because it's a great book, and everyone should read. Yeah, it. He finally read a book. He's I read a book, and I know I'm He's literate. Bad about it. Hey, got a. That being said, I don't want to make it seem like we're illiterate. But we're Hang very on, good at pattern I'm recognition. No longer illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Uh, Patrick Stewart has always been pushing since Star Trek Next Generation's inception for Picard to be more action oriented. No! No, he had, I know, and it's not a good move, and they've contained him, but to get back to do Picard. That'd be doesn't, like, that'd he doesn't be like know a, he's old. He that, yes, know. exactly. So when he finally gets the chance to do Picard, he's like, I'm going to do it. But I'm doing it my way, and Picard's an action hero, and it's like, well, honey, remember, he, he, you're 80. He got to call some shots in Nemesis, too, so he's driving a dune yes. buggy. No, and exactly. Like, People need to be aware about this, because that you're Patrick Swayze right. originally wanted clean dancing. <laughs> 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 and the executive was like, no. <laughs> Only oh. dirty things. No, and I. I what I, if we do I, put baby in the corner? I love. If we're in a spherical room. No, I love Patrick Stewart. I love Captain Picard, but Patrick Stewart's understanding of Captain Picard is surprisingly lacking. And you can read his own words in Faden. He includes the letters that Picard was sending about the script for Insurrection, and you in. You're just lucky that Patrick Stewart was contained for as long as he was, and Picard is what he's always wanted. But and that's the and thing. That's so what you're telling me is. This is where something that came later, not a movie, but a series in this case, yes. walked something back you liked about a character, tried to reinterpret, and yes. that spoils legacy. Not so much that's a good, back, that's a, that's, reinterpret. I think that's yeah. the key, is are you reinterpreting legacy, and and I could see how that have a spoiling effect. Whereas again, going back to our main topic, I don't think Psych 3 did it. You know? No, I don't think so. It was just a bonus chronicles. Right. Like yes. our friend, Ryan, Ryan Lewis, Lewis Rodriguez, Rodriguez. The bonus chronicles. Sign up for his chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> he hate that joke. He really would. Yeah, I don't care. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. I don't know him anything. Well, maybe you'd like him more if you did get to know him. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem I can do without. <laughs> it's a market we can do it without. Uh, but right. yeah, I think retconning or rewalking or reinterpreting something. Uh, you know what else is another example of something that, like uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't put a sequel out there if you don't have any idea how to connect it to the like the second Independence Day, like mm -hmm. that movie first of all never should have happened or even like Jurassic hey, Park. We're opening a lot of cans of worms. We're just going to start talking about sequels that leave behind. But we are talking about something you know, like don't get me started on Tremors three. <laughs> We've talked about it already. <laughs> oh my god. No, but I think if we if we keep it tight and focused on TV shows that go on to have no, these just, revival right. series or revival let's movies, try. yeah, okay, all right. So let's let's focus here. Let's do a quick wrap up on this. When you have something that's been concluded successfully, you can understand why people want to market on it. But unless there's another story to be told, mm -hmm. don't introduce new things if you have no idea where you're going. Like Picard is a perfect example. Yeah. Jean Luc Picard has the I would say one of the best finale arcs ever. He sits down to play cards. Yes. It is so radically different from anything he's ever done. And now we watch Picard and he's he's a fucking robot? Oh, Are God. you kidding me? And it turns out Data was his best friend. He, he he tolerates Data, but he's like annoyed by him most of the time. He's mostly annoyed by Data. He's, he's, like, he's like, oh, right. shut up, Data. Like, you know, it's like... No, like, like if the Picard show was like the, the Ford show and Jordy was doing all of that for data, that makes a lot more or sense. Or the Tasha Yar show. Hey now. More Tasha Yar. Hey now is not a real thing. Use it in a sentence. Uh, well. Uh, hey now is a complete sentence. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's from the Paul Reiser show? Or? No, the Larry. The Larry David. No, not Larry David. Yeah. The Larry Flint. Larry no. Flint. Oh, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that's not it. No, I know. It's uh, yeah, sometimes trying what to break it? stuff out. I mean, that's Paul Reiser, isn't it? What, what was that? Food is ready. We're busy, Mom! <laughs> <laughs> What was, Recording what, my show. What, what was the be show? up in a minute, Mom? Love you. What was the show that had? Um, it was Larry Sanders show. Larry Sanders show, yeah. and that was it. Wasn't Paul Reiser? No, it was uh, the Larry guy who said. Sanders show. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> I love Lance. Yeah, and it was. Uh, it was. It was uh, Jeffrey Tambor. Lance. Oh, Jeff that's Tambor. you. That's him. He's that's seven, that was good. Lance. That that's, was him. He has seven cats. He has seven cats. <laughs> Uh, but uh, wait, wait, we do need to go. go but there's over so many. Again. But there are funny. times too where they do spin-offs or or, or uh, I'm thinking of like a lot of the SNL movies, right? Where yeah. they took little sketches and they broke it out into something more. They had a story to tell though, and and I love a night at the Roxbury. Not maybe not Conan. Wayne's World, but Wayne's, Wayne's World, World absolutely yeah. did. Even Blues Wayne, Brothers, of course. Yeah. Wayne's World too. Um, Wayne's good, World's too is not bad. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I think it's a case of well, everybody in this franchise is free right now. So yeah. we can make something right now with them if if we strike while the iron's hot, and that's you know, like how the Deadwood movie got everything made, gets basically. thrown together before they're Fair enough. they've got a story written, and suddenly before you know it, something's getting churned out. You know what? You're not wrong. I think because the biggest piece is like we need to get everyone back. Yes, you need to get. No everyone. one wants to see new actors in these. Like no one would want to see like as well Although as. Although I thought I thought that uh, the the Sopranos movie made a good precedent with that, where it's like we can go back and tell you a story before it I in think, the same universe. I think they did, and they just kind of they their their focuses were wrong. Yeah, they focus too much yeah. on Tony, where it's like, he, he, as a kid, he's not very... No, like, he steals an ice cream truck. central yeah, to that. Like, was awesome, though. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, but like, Tony like, Soprano's not some sort of food-obsessed maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Cut over <laughs> shoving ice cream in his mouth. Mm, well, and dribble. then, like, the other thing with the Saints of Newark is they have that very awkward scene with the guidance counselor yeah. and Tony Soprano's mom, and it's like, you're laying this on way too right. thick. Like, like, Saints of Newark, when they kind of realized, like, Oh no no! People need like backfill character well, stuff. They laid it on way too thick. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Wanna, I don't want to get. I want. I want to boil it down to like because you guys are talking about spoiling legacy. What as we've talked about retconning. We've talked about reinterpreting. Yes, yeah, those, those kind of things spoil. Yes, tacking I, something extra on at the end's not always the bad thing as long as it doesn't go back and touch the stuff you already love. Yes, I, all right, fair uh, enough. I think that's fair. fair enough. But it's also kind of hard to do to in a way that's compelling. Where it doesn't just kind of feel like a de-escalation. Like we watched the Legends of the Hidden Temple movie, which was yes. excellent, starring Kirk Fogg. And, Kirk Fogg was in it. Yeah, and there was a silver snake and a red jaguar and everything. And it didn't reinterpret what color anything. was the parrot? He was purple. And I think he dies almost instantly. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Uh, no blue barracudas, though. Uh, there was a, yeah, no. A, Wait, were there? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they oh, no, that's right, yeah. when they went over the lake. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it that's right. It looks kind of like a piranha. But anyway, do see Legend of the Hidden Temple movie, because it doesn't walk back anything you loved about the show. Help me, it Lance. only it expands Help. upon it. In, is in that what, what would that trope be where they make a fictional movie based off of a, like a real life game show? That's the only one I can think. That's of. the only the one. Jeopardy movie. <laughs> the Jeopardy well, they movie. Thought it was Double Jeopardy. I remember that. <laughs> <Tom Brady's laughs> Jones Battleship. Hey, uh, in White Man Can't Jump, Marissa Tomei is on Jeopardy at the end. Uh, so I think that's close. Really connecting. Has Wheel of Fortune ever been in a movie? That is something worth looking at. That's something into. for you to find out. You, it, leave it in the comments, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and make sure you hit the bell. That way you can see when our videos come out. Tee -hee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, some could... final thoughts, Derek. So, my biggest problem when they take a franchise that I've really enjoyed and they try to expand on it or expound on it. The question I always ask is, why is this the story you want to tell? So, especially when it comes to like Picard, which is one of the things I've had a hard time with because I was so excited about it because I thought it was going to be the West Wing in space. Oh, I was. So I excited really for did. Picard. I thought I thought Picard was going to be space UN, and I was so excited to see Picard just kind of strut around and like he's like, I'm a hero of the the Federation, and I think that we need to negotiate these things and send him out there and have him like figure things out because. And Picard was the supreme Klingon ambassador. Like, like there was so much stuff they but could have worked But what with. do we get? We get Mass oh, Effect. We get God. people shooting lasers at each other. We get people swearing at okay, each other. Okay, but we've been over this ground because that yes, seemed to... But, but you I asked do me, hate the swearing. You, you asked me, what do I have a problem with? And I have a problem with, you take something that I already thought was well done, 
and you change it, but I don't understand for what reason. And and the reinterpretation thing. And and, and and it happens. It happens especially, like. There's a lot of talk about James Bond not being a British man. Okay, sure. Why not? Well, you, then you can need to go back all the way to the goddamn beginning. Sean Connery wasn't British. Exactly. But why do you feel the need to 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 take something that's iconic as opposed to creating your own franchise? Like, is there no creation left anymore? So when I see like movies and shows where they reinterpret or re like there's a there's there's a story for those characters. You don't have to insert an established character into that story just so you get. I think you Bond's get the, the bad example because no, the but Craig like, the Craig verse does go way back closer to the books. Well, uh, it's closer to what the original idea of Bond is. Again, and then you look at that same time period, and the Bourne movies are kicking yeah, but off. Yeah, but again, but again, that's Picard, a whole kind of a new character. You, I mean, he had you, books. But. You you take Picard out of Star Trek Picard. And it's an entertaining sci-fi romp. You, the moment Replace you put him maybe with a small pixie, <laughs> or some kind of uh, uh, let's say let's say for the Picard Southern series, space you, gator? You, some you, kind of space gator. Let, but let's it say you were like, you know, like, what could is it? Picard. Why is it so important that it's Picard? What, exactly. What, like you could put it. Why is it a Picard story? Put Nathan it's not Fillion Picard in story. Picard's role and call him like Drac Here, Darkstar. Here's why. And everyone, it's the same show. Because they got Patrick Stewart to agree and sign on the it, line. Yes, exactly. And they had to make sure everyone knows that Patrick Stewart's in this show. Yes. You know, it's You're not, not wrong. Yeah. It it explains it, but and it doesn't even, justify it. Even with maybe a not. cheeky Riker cameo, it's not enough to you say. Know, it. Justified? I mean, maybe that movie wasn't very good either. The the new Justified series that's going to come out, I'm guaranteeing I, I'm it's fucking terrible. It's not going to be good. I, I it, have low expectations. It, it, but like, especially because Justified to me is the perfect finale. It ends so perfectly, Capstone. You have to constantly ask yourself why. The moment we stop asking why yeah. is it is when we we lose it. I know, but I want to tread lightly on this because the the number of times where it seems like they've retconned or spoiled something is counteracted by the number of great times it worked. Let us not forget that Clerks brought us Clerks, the animated series. And and being able to break out that story and continue it in another medium of television, in this case, sort of the reverse phenomenon, it's the reverse, yeah. brought something great. And we see that a lot. The Beetlejuice okay. animated series right. is great. I, I'm Back gonna, to the Future animated series. I'm gonna agree series. with you on that, but here's uh, the The Transformers movie is True. a great way to yeah. bridge those seasons. Well, well here's no, the, there's here's definitely the ways it can work. You're they, not wrong. They never took their work as sacrosanct. And like, they, they the never reinterpreted it. They never get, reinterpreted how, inter how often do you faithful. get? How often do you get not just the cast back, but the crew back, the people who were directing, the people who were writing? How often does all of the magic come back to put together the new work that keeps that sort of field of what you okay. love? Well, here's an example. You know, what, you know what did have that where everyone came back, even Clark people who Fiona weren't Mason. working on it? There's no, the Simpsons on. movie. I was going to mention the Simpsons movie I, earlier. The Simpsons and they movie, brought back a they lot brought of their back everyone. Core great people. They brought the back everyone from the Golden Age yeah, of the but, Simpsons movie. All right. And now, what do you think about the Simpsons movie? That's up to you. I kind of like the Simpsons I movie. I like it. It was fine. Especially for what was but, being put out on the show. Guys, the I saw it three times in one day. It's the most how, time I've ever saw a movie. How does the Jaws 2 add to <laughs> Jaws? It doesn't. It, it does. That's, that's, a, that's a different That's because they couldn't no. get the same creator. That's a different it's conversation. Legacy. It's, no, it's the, the legacy the of something. They couldn't get the same You have the legacy of something, and it's like, I don't know. But to me, it do, I don't know. Jaws 2 I mean, 2 you can say that with like every horror Jaws movie. Jaws 2, too, 3, 4. Some horror movies have better sequels. The Revenge, Not all Hellraiser. of that existing does, Hellraiser 2 is great. All of that doesn't. Better than Hellraiser 1? No. Better bad. than Hellraiser 3 with the VHS uh, but Scream monster? 2 is better than Scream 1. I can see. And Correct. So, yeah, it is. Uh, and a lot of the same people were brought back to Yeah, Scream no, you're right, it. you're right, you're right. Um, but, Scream 3 is criminally but underrated and underappreciated. But here's what I'd say is uh, Jaws 2 and 3 don't spoil my enjoyment of Jaws. Jaws is still the greatest movie that's, of all time. Jurassic Park point. 3 all doesn't right. ruin Jurassic right. Park for me. Um, yes, yeah. but but that requires your own personal mental gymnastics. I don't now, know, have you, 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 you got to compartmentalize like you I know, do. You know, you do compartmentalize. Oh, wait, I forgot yeah, yeah, yeah. everything well, Derek's like, ever have done you seen to me. Ghostbusters Afterlife? Yes. So, like, I kind of like Ghostbusters Afterlife, but... When I, I Ghostbusters is my favorite movie of all time. I'll that's, just watch Ghostbusters. True. I'll just watch Ghostbusters. I don't need to watch Ghostbusters 2. I don't need to watch Answer the Call. I don't need to watch well, Jaws Afterlife. is my favorite movie. 
I don't know if I've ever seen two and three. Yeah, exactly. I think right? I've seen two oh, once. I, on like TNT. And I look, and I'm not saying I, I those other Ghost Jaws movies. is my favorite movie. Those I've other seen Ghostbusters all movies are them. bad. They're I terrible. Say, I I, one day I will. Jaws, one day I'll Jaws, just go Jaws, through them. Jaws four is great if you assume yeah. it's like uh, satirical. Tremors is a perfect movie, even though Tremors two and three exist. Gremlins is a perfect movie, even though Gremlins two exists and is fine, but isn't as good. I think Gremlins two might be a little better. It's not. You're well, wrong. Well, well the first you can all, join all the people on the internet who are wrong. They're completely <laughs> different. <laughs> they're completely different movies. Gremlins one is much more horror. Gremlins I agree. 2 Gremlins is Gremlins one is good. And then Gremlins two is is comedy. And I I think Maynard is going to sour on Gremlins two by the end of the year at this rate. It just keeps chipping away. It was just away. a little movie that wasn't hurting it anybody. Keeps and everybody away. had to come out going, you know what? It's brilliant. <laughs> no, yeah. it was, it's very funny. We watched it. Uh, no, like, what, like, <laughs> I do. Like, two, two years ago, we watched it no, and no. we had to pause it. It, it holds up. The we new Space watching. Jam exists. It doesn't spoil oh, the no, old no, Space no, Jam. No, no, no. All right, yeah. Well, yeah, I think you just proved the point. Like, I almost wonder if we need to give Space Jam 2 the same 15 years we gave Space Jam 1 to really appreciate it. Okay, so so clearly. This is Dude, so when was the last time you watched Space Jam? What do you realize? Like some of these jokes are way too smart for kids. Last year, like Bill and Murray, what are you doing here? I knew one of the producers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Every Looney, <laughs> uh, Looney Tunes Christ. is just smart. So, I yeah. love, yeah, Looney Tunes is pretty great. All right, so uh, clearly this is going to be a, a conversational topic we have to revisit because you know I thought we were going to be a lot more of a single mindset on this. And it turns out we all have, like, the... No, I'm actually pretty close to where Maynard is. I think if you have these revivals that reinterpret and retcon too much... That'll make it, me dislike the revival, yeah, but not it, the original. No, no, I'll never not like the original. Oh, nobody said you dislike the original. But if you have to take Unless things... I said it earlier. No, but if you have to take off, everything as canon... Well, to me, when we're, yeah, when we're talking about if you spoiling have to legacy, take the canon, if you have to take the whole canon. If you have to this take the whole canon, canon <laughs> a lot of these things drag the canon this is down. The canon. So if you could pick okay. and choose... What you want, which of course you can. This is America. You pick and choose whatever you want. Or you can just watch Lord of the Rings. Just, you know, solid all the way through. And hey, you know what? I kind of like the, the TV show. I like the Hobbit We don't know. We don't know yet. The... I'm going to guess that the TV show is going to be mediocre at best. The ring wasn't really destroyed. No, it's... <laughs> <laughs>